Hi, this is Adri. Today's Memorial Day and I like to commemorate all the fallen heroes with a poppy flower pot painting tutorial. Hope you enjoy. I pre-sketched it on an 8x10 and I'm using a stretch canvas, the color black, cobalt blue, green, phthalo, phthalo green, red, a spray bottle, white paint, and yellow chroma paint. Besides all the tools, I'll be using an acrylic paint marker for the stars, a permanent black marker to sign my name and details, a two inch flat brush, a silver brush, a flat bright, a round liner brush, and an angle one inch brush. The first step is wetting my brush, sweeping white to the side, a little dab of yellow, and I'm toning down the chroma with a dot of black so it won't be too bright. And then I just go over the background and it doesn't matter if it goes over the lines, especially in the middle of the pot. Because uh, yellow and white are obviously transparent so you'll be still able to see the lines, the tracing lines have to be perfect I'm not worried about being perfect here because this is the first layer I'm gonna go back and do a second layer for the background and possibly doing some touches so here no stress I love this brush because it actually gives me a lot of control the bristles are pretty firm and it covers a lot of canvas now this is the second step this is the phthalo green I'm gonna use uh, yellow to kind of brighten it up with a dab of white because uh, phthalo green is pretty dark, but this is still the darker value of green, which is the first layer. Later on, we're gonna create highlights. I'm not sure if you saw that, but as I am loading my brush, there's a big blob of paint on the brush, and in order to control your paint, you swirl the brush flat on your surface and only leave paint on the tip of your brush. This way you have control as to where the paint goes on the canvas. So here I'm not, again, this is the first layer, darkest value for the foliage. So I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm just trying to cover most of the base. swirling again when I do thin leaves I start with the tip of the leaf with the lightest touch and as I swoop in to the base of the leaf I press down so the lightest touch and press down this gives you control and it gives you a little thickness going inward I'm also using small strokes small quick strokes there you go. After I'm done with green, then I just remove any leftover paint from the brush using the paper towel 
and I clean it with clean water. Put it to the side. Now I'm gonna paint the pot with blue using the cobalt blue and the bright flat brush. Now cobalt blue is pretty bright, the chrome is high, so I'm gonna to tone that down by using black and I'll just grab a little uh, dab of black on the corner of my brush and this deepens. I start on the edge and I'm using the brush in an angle probably 45 degree and I'm mainly using to cover the base of the pot just with the brush on the flat side however on the corners I start with the brush perpendicular to the base so basically the tip pointing um, down and this gives me a lot of control now when I want to cover the large spaces then I use the flat side of the brush and I just keep loading going back don't have so much paint on the brush just mostly on the tip and this gives you a nice uh, control Here I'm working the background again for the second layer, just uh, wetting my brush again and using just straight white. This um, allows me to brighten the background because I do want the pot to stand out with the blue, red, and green. I'm going to wipe the white paint off with a clean napkin and put it back in the jar. I switched brushes to a, again, flat bright wash and I am working the pot rim. I'm using the edge of the brush to have that nice clean cut. So I'm probably at 20, 20 degree angle. I'm right handed so I will switch the brush sideways upside down to fit the angle of my hand again I don't have a lot of paint on my brush I did um, offload a lot and allowing that not to have gumps of paint on your brush gives you that nice clean lining Thank you. 
Now I'm still working with the same brush and red and I'm going to start the poppy. Now I start from sometimes from the edges of the petals and um, at times I use a little dab of black just the corner of my brush and I work from the top going down to the base of the petal and sometimes from the base going to the tip of the petals but I basically <clears throat> I use the tip first and then work my way in by applying pressure so the brush could actually go flat as I go inward now because I did have a little bit of the black left over for on the tip I just use that tip to kind of create a little bit of contrast on the center of the flowers. Now on this flower, um, I do see the demarcations of the flower. So I go in working each petal again by using the left side of my brush and then I switch it to color with the right side of my brush. Now I am going to keep in mind that the light comes from the left. So any highlights when we come back are going to be lighter on the edges of the petals and darker on the base of the flower. Now again, for the smaller flowers, I go in more perpendicular and then work my way in perpendicular because the petals are more narrow. With flowers that are wider, I can do more of the flat side of the brush than using the side of the brush with the smaller flowers. Here, I start a little bit just to give a hint of the highlights, but just not removing any of the red paint and dipping into the straight chroma yellow on the tip of my brush. And I'm just lining with the tip of my brush the highlights of the tip of the petals. For an unknown reason, my camera stopped recording, but I pretty much mixed this color. It's, um, it's a, more like a taupe gray, so I use white, black, and a little bit of green and red. But you could pretty much use, this is a table, so you could use a chocolate brown, a tan, a light brown, and so forth. Now I'm going back to the flowers 
with more highlights and I created an orange by um, using red and yellow and I'm really just focusing more on the tips of the flowers to create again the depth between the highlights and then the low lights at the base of the flowers and at times I after doing all the orange then I do go back with yellow and as you can see I did a boo-boo here so that's okay because it's just paint I grabbed a little bit of a napkin wet it and went back and wiped it off voila again I'm just using the flat side of the brush because this flower is wider so I'm able to do that but in the other areas where the flowers are small and the petals are more narrow then I have to use the side of the brush now here I'm just going to dip into the corner of um, the tips of the brush with just a straight yellow and creating even more highlights. Now it's time to do some depth. And by doing that, I used the liner brush, dipped into the black, and started doing the center of the flower. So I start at the center of the flower and I whisk it upwards to the tip of the flowers. This is giving me a sense of depth, defining the flowers a little bit more. It's time to create the highlights, the second layer on the foliage with more highlights. And by doing that, I lighten the paint, the value of the paint, by adding more yellow to the green that already existed um, in a little dot of white. This lightens it up and allows to create some highlights. And as you can see, in some areas that you missed any paint or they just, the flowers just, I mean, the, the petals look a little bit more wobbly. We just go over with the highlights. switching brush to the liner brush with white paint and again creating contrast where we place the black center of the flowers 
So first I dot dot dot, stamp, 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 some white dots and remove the white paint, dip straight into the yellow and dot 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 on top of the whites. Now using the silver brush, I dip into the white and start painting the white daisies using the tip of the filbert brush starting from again the edge of the flower petal and working my way, my way inward and again because there's not a lot of space with these flowers I'm using more of the side of the brush than doing the flat side of the brush and towards the end I not removing the white paint I dipped into a little bit of a gray to start creating um, some definition on the center of the flowers and defining some of the petals. I clean my brush, switched over to the liner brush, dip into the black paint and start working the center of the daisies by again stamping little dots in the interior and defining some of the petals to create some contrast. Now I'm going to do the final highlights on the foliage by adding more yellow to the already existing pile of the green and this is going to give me the highest um, value. So it gives them the nice highlights and I'm only using this kind of on the edges of the leaves to create that two tone. Now it's the fun part, using the acrylic paint marker. I'm just drawing little stars in here. And this is because it's just harder to use the liner brush for the smaller stars. For the bigger stars, you could actually use the liner. switched over to the liner brush and swirled my brush flat on the surface to remove all the excess paint and allow only to have paint on the tip of my brush. This allows me to give a nice blend of paint without having so much paint on the brush and instead of a star, it'll be a circle or a dot. Now the finishing touches, I'm going to use the black permanent marker, sign my name, and just use it to define any um, lines around the pot, around the edges, uh, create some contrast and definition on the leaves, and anywhere else you want to create contrast so you can really show the colors and edges of the flower pot. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. You can pause and replay if you like. Here's my painting. Remember the fallen.
always remember. <laughs>